Have you ever noticed that every time you get an important message, you're either driving, you're on the phone, or you're in a meeting, and you can't respond to that message right away? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to build an AI automation tool that will respond to any inbound messages and become your SMS autoresponder. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this right now. First, let's look at the automation in the bird's eye view. All right, so I'm gonna look and break down each piece that's needed. It's actually really three tools that you need in order to build this automation. And um, I'm gonna tell you how much everything costs and I'm gonna show you how to build this step by step, okay? All right, so the first thing that we use is a tool called Twilio. That's where we get our number from. And a message comes in through our Twilio number. Once the message comes in, we gotta have um, OpenAI analyze that message and find out what the intent of the uh, sender, what what is the per, what is the sender trying to tell us? Why why are they texting us? After we have the after we receive that message and we analyze that message, we are going to then respond to the message and saying, "Hey, I got your message. I'm going to look into it right now." And in this scenario, we are assuming that someone is texting us because of a signing, right? So since um, a title company is, is texting us about a signing, we could then extract that date and time, and then we're going to search the calendar. Um, in this case, we're using Outlook. We use the Outlook calendar. We're gonna search the calendar and see um, an hour before the time slot and an hour after the time slot. We're gonna see whether or not uh, we're available at that time. And then after we do that, then we get to confirm the availability with the, um, the sender, let them know yes or no, I'm available. And then after that, um, we are going to add it to the calendar. All right, so that's that's the automation in a nutshell. All right, so the first piece we need is Twilio, right? So Twilio is where we will get our number from. Um, Twilio is free to use. It's actually a pay per usage type of plan. Um, the first thing you need to do is uh, purchase a number, uh, a phone number. And actually, let me just log into Twilio to show you real quick. So once you're in Twilio um, and you sign up, you just have to uh, then purchase a number. So you can choose a number in any area code that you're in, or you can choose a toll free number. In my case, I chose, I chose a, a toll free number to use, um, but you can choose a number that's local in your area, All right? So once you get a number, it costs like a dollar, a dollar 15 cents. I think the, the, the toll free numbers were like $2, something like that. Once you have a number and you purchase a number, you're going to have to go through in order to text message for text messaging, you have to go through a verification process. Okay. And, um, the verification process requires that you have, they want to make sure that any, anyone that's, um, you sending test me text messages to that, that person, uh, approve you um, sending them a text message. Okay. So for me, I built, um, I built this site, um, that basically have a signing like an opt-in form, right? So in the opt-in form, this is, this is very important because Twilio is going to access see this site. They get access for you for the link during the verification process. And then you just have to have collect the, 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 um, their name, their phone number, and then you have to have, um, some a policy in place to saying that they agree to receive SMS based messages. Then you're going to have to have a disclaimer. Um, you can sign up for a site like this through most, any, 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 um, any like mass mail marketing tool, like MailChimp, for example, will, will give you options to create these type of forms. Um, or if you have, um, any type of website, well, any, any website that allows you to, um, build forms, you, you can do this as well. You could probably even build a Google form uh, with Google forms and build this in a Google form as well. I think Twilio's main concern is that you are collecting this. You, you get consent from the, from the, um, the sender that you're able to, 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 to text message them. Okay. So it asked me how I know is because I tried to, to apply several times, they denied me, but then once I realized what they were asking for, what was required, I built this, sent it to them and then they approved me. Okay. All right. So that's, that's the hard part of this entire process. When you do text messages well, for phone, if you looked at my other video, where I discussed how to do, how to build an AI receptionist, I also use Twilio, but it, this wasn't required. So for phone, it's fine. But for text messaging, they, they're very strict with that. Okay. And, and Twilio is one of the platform that we, that I use, but there's other platforms like clicks, click to send, I think is another option, um, that you could build automations with. And they require the same thing that like you have to have some kind of opt-in form and where the, where, um, you send your people who you want to text and then that they can, um, complete the form and they give you authorization to, um, send them text messages. Okay. 
Okay. So once you do that, um, in order to connect uh, Twilio to make, you're gonna have to get half an API API key. Um, but once you once you sign in, um, um, once you sign into to the studio, you will have an option. Actually, I believe it's under account dashboard. Once you go to the account dashboard, um, your your um, API keys here. This is what you're gonna need in order to you're gonna need your um, your, your authentication token and the SID. You're gonna need this two information in order to connect Twilio to Make. Okay. And speaking of Make, um, <laughs> Make is the automation tool that uh, we use in order to um, allow all the software to talk together. So it'll allow Twilio to to talk to open AI and allow that to talk to our Google, um, I'm sorry, our uh, Outlook calendar. It, it brings all the pieces together, okay? And everything that I discussed today, I'm gonna put links in the show notes so that way you can just click it and sign up for it as well. Uh, with Make, Make is also uh, free to get started as well. Uh, if we go to the pricing tab, you'll see that it's free. They give you a thousand operations per month. So for at least for this automation, you will be able to build it without any cost. But it's, as you grow, you're going to have to go up to their higher tier products and sign up for that as well. OK, uh, the third piece that we have and that we use is open AI. OK, open AI is what we use. I'm sure you heard chat GPT. This is open AI is the company behind it. Um, what you sign, once you go to platform.openai.com, you can sign in with your your Google credentials. Once you sign in with your Google credentials, or you can sign up sign up with your regular email as well. Um, once you sign sign up, you just have to add some money here. All right, so I believe it's ten dollars to get started, and then you can set a replenish amount replenishment amount for five dollars, and it replenishes your account as you use it, as you use the um, the OpenAI. All right, um, yeah. So you just have to add your add a add a payment method. And then it'll automatically build you for that. So this, this is pretty straightforward here as well. Okay. And again, you could also receive an API key that you're going to need in order to connect um, OpenAI to Make. Okay. All right. So let's now that we know all the all the pieces. The third piece is um, obviously um, the Google. My not Google. Sorry, <laughs> my uh, Microsoft account. Um, I have um, Office 365, which I pay, I believe eight dollars a month for my um, email once you have your domain you can do that but with this automation you can all you can also use google so if you have like gmail you can use uh, your, your your google calendar as well okay but i'm using um outlook because that's what i use okay all right awesome all right so let's go into let's start let's build this automation all right so the first piece like i mentioned is what we need is we need twilio so let's go like the twilio all right so for Twilio, what we're going to do is we are going to watch calls. So what 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 what, is, what this is going to do is um, when you I'm sorry I said watch calls I actually need to watch mess messages I did the wrong thing so let's start over go to Twilio we need to watch messages not calls we're not watching for phone calls or watching for messages okay so any um already and and, and I'm sorry when you connect any new module to make. A prompt is going to come up so that you can you can connect it with your um, API key. Some requires API. Some um, modules requires API keys. Others requires logins. Like for example, Google require you to log into your Google account. But like Twilio and um, um, OpenAI requires API keys. Okay. All right. So the first thing we need to do is add our phone number. So I'm going to add my phone number here. Um, this is it. And I'll put one message as a limit. Okay. Hit OK. And we can say from now on. Okay. Uh, and if you right click, if you right click on it, let me just see if I can zoom in for you a little bit. Hopefully. There we go. Sorry. Well, I'm zooming in all the way. All right. If you right click on it and you click, uh, if, you, oh, if you just hit the play button, if we hit the play button to run once, it'll run the automation once. And then once it's green, it lets you know that Twilio and make is communicating with each other. Okay. So, um, what we want to look out for is uh, a message. Okay. So I'm going to send, um, I'm going to send my, send a message and so that way we can test it. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go here. So let's say test message. 
hit send. All right, so I sent the test message and we are going to run it. It may take a few seconds before it show up again, but let's see if it, if it runs it again. All right, there we go. So um, I sent the test message and it came through. Okay, perfect. It says at the body, test message. Awesome. All right, so what we want to do next is we want to use OpenAI to, um, to analyze messages that comes in, right? So I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to copy from what I've already built and then we'll go over it, okay? But actually, let's, let's do it from scratch. Sorry. <laughs> um, if we go, if we click on a new module, hit open AI. And what we want to do in this case is we want to create a completion. Okay. And in this case, we are going to use the model. We could use uh, 4 0. Um, and then we are going to, the role is going to be user. And then um, the max tokens in this case could be a thousand. Oops. Oh too much a little delay there and what i want to do is i want to uh let's let's copy the message so that we save a little time here trying to make this video as fast as possible awesome cool. all right oops oh. here sorry about that give me a second Give me one second. There we go. All right, <laughs> we're back. All right, so let's read it. Based on the transcript, provide a summary of problems, issues, desires in the text message. If no objections are provided, simply state no object, no key objections. Also include one sentence on the sentiment and tone of the text message, as well as a summary of the request. And the transcript is going to be in Twilio. It's going to be the body, right? So if we go to body, all right, that's the body. So what it's going to do, it's going to analyze the message as it comes in and it's going to see what they'll see, what the tenth, uh, um, sentiment is of the call and, and, and of the, about the call of the text message and um, provide that information. Okay. So let's rename this to intent. And let me give it a quick emoji. All right, cool. Awesome. All right, let's hit save. And uh, let's see, let's test it out. Okay, so let's do this. Let's say, um, I like, are you available? for a closing on Monday at um, 11 a.m. in, uh, let's say, Jersey City, Jersey City. Um, I'm in New Jersey. So there's a town called Jersey City um, in New Jersey, right? We'll hit send, all right? And let's get back to the screen and I'm gonna show you this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is let's hit run once and let's see what comes up next. Okay, boom. Let's make sure we got the correct message. Are you available for closing on Monday at 11 a.m. in Jersey City? Great. And let's see what the sentiment is. No key objection, the sentiment and tone, the sentiment and tone, the tone of the text message is neutral and professional. Summary of the request. The sender is asking about a recipient's availability to attend a closing on Monday at 11 a.m. in Jersey City. All right, so that's cool. All right, so next, what we want to do is we want to notify the we want to notify the um, we want to notify the person who sent us a text message saying, "Hey, I got your message," and I'm looking into it. Okay, so what we want to do next is we want to go back to Twilio, and we want to say, uh, "Create a message." Okay. All right, we are going to send from phone number. And the phone number is the 888 number. And um, it's going to be to the person that just sent us the message. So if you go back into Twilio, we minimize, let's just minimize everything. Let's go back into Twilio, which is our original uh, message. And it corresponds with the number. So you see Twilio 2 here, you know, Twilio 2 here. So that's where we watch it for messages. So we make it easier, easy, easier for us to find. 
All right, so we want to go to the person who sent us the message. So it'll be from, that's what we said in the message to, right? And then the body of the message is we're going to create a body and in the body, we're going to write this, okay? Then I'm going to just copy and paste again to make it a little bit faster for us. Okay, so I wrote, hello, I'm the AI assist assistant for 24 seven closes. Let me check our calendar to see who's available for your closing. Be back in a sec. Okay. So we'll hit okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do, instead of writing another text message, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, have, have this, have the, um, automation just run from the last uh, text message. And the way to do that is if you right click here and, uh, right click on the, the, the trigger and we go cho uh, choose where to start, it'll pull up. It'll pull up um, these options. So you can say from now on, from a specific date. So if we wanted to go back to text messages from yesterday, if we could pull it up, then we could do that. But we're going to say choose manually. And it should, it should pull up the last few messages that came through. So you can see some earlier tests, test messages I did yesterday. But for today, we're going to say, are you available for closing on Monday at 11 a.m. in Jersey City? All right. Hit OK. And hit run once. And it should run it. OK. We'll find the intent. And let's see what the response is. And we should see actual, we should see the response come up on the phone, like you can see right now, right? And it says, hello, I'm the AI assistant for 24 seven closes. Let me check our calendar to see who's available for your closing. Be back in a sec. Okay. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So now that's what well, the next thing we want to do is we want to extract any dates and times. Okay. And if you noticed um people were people communicate in different ways right so they may give a date like a full date and they may also give a, a date so if today um i'm recording this video on a thursday they may want it for next week they may say next thursday they may see on monday they may say saturday or they may see a date they may say a date on the text message so we want ai to be able to distinguish what is the person talking about and and and, and go from there okay so that's what we're going to do in the next uh next next module. So again, we are using open AI and what we want to do is we want to um, extract, um, the text and, and create it and make it into a structured data. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a second. So it is an option here on open AI to transform the text into the structured data. All right. And what we're going to do again, we can use GPT 4.0 and the text that we are going to parse is from the body, right? So the, the text we got to parse is from the body, which is this much is here. And the prompt is this. Okay. So I'm going to copy again. It's the same one all the time. Okay. And then we'll go through it together. Okay. All right. All right. So the prompt says the prompt is, um, extract the date and time. If, uh, if a date of the week is given in the text, then you parse, then you parse convert it, convert it to date format using the date variable below. Um, today's date is, um, I, I gave it what today's date is. And there's a function, you have different functionalities here. So if we click inside, you, you have these different options. You have, um, like text, you can, you can um, do some text functionality, but in this particular case, we work with the date. So there's like a little calendar icon here. If you click on that, um, you can use certain built-in variables that make has available. Um, so now it'll be whatever the, whatever the date and time is right now, or at the time of the automation. And what I'm telling it is today's date is now, and I want to format it into month, date and year. So MM slash, um, day, day and slash year, uh, the four digit, the four digit year. Okay. Um, I'm telling it to format the date. Okay. And, um, next I, I just, uh, specified, uh, convert the date into the format, which I already did. It's redundant. And I said, I also convert the time to military format time. So example, uh, 15 PM, which would be, uh, three o'clock PM because I wanted to, I wanted to distinguish between AM and PM, um, because sometimes, uh, because sometimes, you know, people may put three o'clock, but they don't necessarily know if it's 3 PM or you don't want to obviously we're not doing anything at 3 a.m right so that was one thing so now that we are this is going to produce a date and time what i want to do is i want to put those into variables okay so that way i can 
uh, use it in a later module. So what we do, need to do is turn this into a structured data. Okay. So uh, if we add the add the data definition and then the parameters, we want to say date. Let's type that in. Um, the description is date of signing. And the data type is going to be uh, text. And we give it a few examples. So an example we can give it is, um, let's see, it's a date 01, 01, 2025 date. All right, so that's, a, that's one um, data definition. And you could put whether, whether it's required or not. I said no. And let's add the second one. The second one is going to be um, time, right? Description is time of signing. Let's go here, right? It's also going to be text. And let's give it an example. An example of a time could be like 13 o'clock p.m. And let's give it a a.m. time. We could say like um, 09 o'clock. Oops, a.m. All right. So those are two examples. So a.m. and p.m. Okay. And I gave it the military time as specified above. Okay. Hit OK. And let's see. Let's just uh, rename this. Let's name it to extract the time. Okay. Time. Let's give it a little clock. All right. Good. And I forgot to rename this one, so let's just rename it while we're here. And we got to call it uh, notify. There. And let's give it a little speech bubble. Awesome. Let's make sure we save this and uh, let's run it again. Right. So we run the module. I'm oh, sorry. Choose where to start. And we are going to choose manually and we're going to choose this. Hit OK. And let's run it again. OK. OK, perfect. So we've seen these two already. Let's see what it says here. All right. So it extracted a date. We, we originally said Monday. So if you look at the input, we said uh, what today's date was. Um, the original text that we parsed was it said Monday at 11 a.m. as we see right here. But we and today is the first, but it knew that Monday was the fifth is the fifth. OK, and it's going to be at 11 a.m. OK, perfect. So this is great. Exactly what we wanted. OK, so the next thing we need to do now is we need to search the calendar. Right. So we need to um, check whether or not uh, we need to check whether or not that uh, available at that time. Right. So what we're going to do is. What I had to do in this particular case is, and I'm going to show you this right now. Um, Outlook didn't have anything spe specific as to doing a search for a calendar, but I know that you can search for free busy time, right? Because I know, for example, Google has something built into it right now. So if we look at Google, this just for an example, um, Google Calendar. If you go to Google Calendar, they have what's called get free busy information. And with Outlook, it didn't have that. So it was a little, sorry, I'm back at <laughs> Outlook. It didn't have that. So that was a little tricky. So, and I'll show you if we go to out, let's see. Oops, uh, Microsoft calendar. If you go to Microsoft 365 calendar, they didn't have anything that specified uh, to get the free busy time. So the free, just so you know, free busy time, it, it basically gives you a rundown of when of, of your calendar entries and it'll show you when you're available. OK, so what I had to do in this particular case is I had to use their API. All right. And I'm going to show you their API in a second. Um, if we go to and I'll, I'll, I'll include a link to this in the show notes as well. But um, if you go to Microsoft's um, API documentation and if you scroll to get free busy schedule information, you will see what uh, HTTP. Oops, I lose it. This should be here. Sorry. You see what HTTP uh, requests that you can use and the post that we need to use is um, 
um, me slash calendar uh, get scheduled. And then it specifies exactly how to use it, gives you examples as well on how to use it. So I had to like study this uh, documentation to allow me to know what to do, but I'm gonna show you what, what we didn't make, okay? So let's close this back in and put this up back. And that for you. All right. Um, so the URL, as I just uh, specified, is here. Let's see. This is the URL I'll use. All right. And again, to connect uh, your Microsoft Calendar, it's going to uh, prompt you to log into your um, Microsoft 365 account. And then it's going to prompt you to give your permissions. Once you hit that, then it'll allow you to connect to your schedule. Okay. Connect to your calendar. Sorry. Uh, next thing we need to do is we need to post. And what we need to do according to the documentation is we need to add um, certain headers, right? So one thing we need to add is this is automatically in, whereas using the JSON, the content type is JSON. Um, and the next thing we got to use is we are going to add the time zone. Okay. So I'm on Eastern time. So I'm going to put, I'm going to set it to Eastern time as the preference. I prefer all the scheduling being Eastern time. Uh, but you obviously would choose whatever time zone you're in and you can add it to central time, uh, mountain time, whatever time you're on. And then you, you just put it in there as well. Okay. So those are the headers that's needed. Um, next we have to type into the body. So the body uses JSON format. Okay. But I'm going to show you this. And uh, what I didn't mention earlier is, um, this entire flow and this entire workflow is going to be in, um, my community um and i'll include a link below to my uh private community where all you have to do is hit this import button right here uh click on um import blueprint and then you could just in import the blueprint and you'll be able to download the blueprint off the community as well if you're interested in that but you can continue to, to follow here and then you can build it yourself as well so it's your, your call here all right so uh, uh, this is, this is the format that it needs. And if you go back to the documentation that I showed you earlier, it, it kind of breaks this down as well on what you can, on what you can do about, I just pulled the field that was, um, necessary right here. I just pulled this here and, um, I just, uh, customized it to what I, what I needed to get done. Okay. Specifically when it came to formatting the date. So the date is a funny thing to make, you have to kind of format it the right way. And if you hover over this date function it kind of gives you a little bit of um help a little guide there all right but um what we need to change this here we need to make a, little, so a few changes here so i'm just going to go ahead and change the date it's not 15 time oops i mess up sorry i think i paste the wrong thing here let's do it again Perfect. So here, so take off 15 and we are going to add the time, sorry, the date. Oh, my apologies. The date is going to be right here. The date is going to be right there and then we'll just change all of them. Date. We'll go back here. Date. And then we'll go back here. Oh. Sorry. It's time. It's time. And this is time. Sorry about that. Time. All right. So uh, the way this is uh, set up is that we're formatting the date and time. And what we want to do is this minus one is we're going to check an hour before the proposed time. And this one, it says one, which is hour after the proposed time. So we get to check if it's, if it's 11 o'clock, right. In this particular scenario, it's going to check from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. It's going to check that three hour window to see if I'm available, because if, you know, say for example, you have something that was scheduled until uh, 1030 or, you know, 1045, you don't want to schedule something so soon. You kind of want to have a window to make sure that you're available only to know what's going on at that time. So this, uh, this, um, API is going to pull, um, time slots from that date and time. Okay. 
All right. All right. So let's see. Let's just rename this to search calendar. Okay. And system second. Perfect. All right, so let's save this. And what I want to do is um, let's look at my calendar real quick. What date did I say again? I did say um, I did say Monday at eleven a.m. But let's choose something. Let's choose um, something else. Let's actually give it a date this time. Okay. So, <laughs> so my wife is fine. Um, all right, you. For a closing on, uh, let's say eight, uh, twelve, um, at, um, let's say two p.m. For a closing, uh, you have a closing at two two p.m. in Newark. Question mark. All right, so we'll send that in. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, it's at 2 p.m. I'm going to put some calendar entries in. If it's at 2, it's going to search 1, right? So let's see 1. Let's put one in for 1 to 130. I'll just say test. Um, we'll save that. And let's put one, you know what? Let's put one in at a, let's put one in at a 2.30, test two, and hit save, All right? So in this particular case, it's, it should come back as no. And the reason it's gonna come back as no, because what I didn't tell you here is on this calendar, I put the available interview interval, sorry, at 60. So this is minutes. So it wanted to give me a one hour window when I'm available. Okay. So I did say two o'clock, uh, 2 PM and it's, it should come back. Um, well, it's not going to come back yet. Well, after we, after we build the scenario, it should come back as no, but at least let's, um, let's, uh, let's run this. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's run this. Okay. So let's just pull the last one. Are you available for posting 8, 12? 2 p.m. in Newark, and it ran here. And let's see what it came back with. Uh, the values. All right. So it came back with these values, right? So it came back with uh, 812. Um, let's see. Let me see test, right? Subject is test. So it came back with the first test. Um, and I, I'm busy. And it came back with a second one, test two. Good. And it put that at uh, 1430, so it's just 230. Right. So now we have, we get, so as your calendar is filled up, it's going to pull up all of these, um, these values. But what we need to do now is we need to extract all of these values and analyze it. So we can have open AI analyze these values and tell us, Hey, um, it'll let, 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 let the person know if I'm available or not. Okay. So what we need to do first is we need to, this is, this is in a JSON, JSON format. Um, so we need to extract all of this data, right? So what we need to do first is we need to use what's called an iterator, right? All right. So iterator looks just like how it is. So it's going to pull information in and it's going to iterate that data and, and, and push it into an array. So for our iterator, what we need, what we need on our iterator is we need to get the body and the scheduled items, right? So let's go here. So we'll go here and we need to go to, to body. And we need to go to schedule items. So we go to values and the schedule items. We need to get everything in here. We need, cause we need the start and the end dates. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the schedule items and we hit okay. And it's going to pull everything in. It's going to pull all those schedule items from each one of these, um, uh, values, right? So we have two values. Uh, where is it? Yeah, the schedule item. Sorry, we have two values here. So it's going to pull these two values in here. Okay. So that's what we need. Um, after we iterate the, that data, what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to 
take all that information and and squish it into like one big text so that way we can have open ai analyze it because open ai is not going to analyze each of the arrays they're going to want to analyze everything into a text all right so what we're going to do is you're going to use a tool and the tool is going to call it aggregator okay we're going to we're going to turn this all into a text all right we're going to call it text aggregator so we're going to go with text aggregator all right so this text aggregator is going to pull everything from the iterator and it's going to combine the text right so what we're going to say is whoops whoops what happened too many screens too many screens all right let's show the advanced options um so for the row separator you can say other and then we want to go down and we, what we want to do is we want to um pull the start time and then we want to pull that and then we want to also pull the end time start time end time oh actually not the entire thing my apologies we need to start time date and then we also need the end time date time we really just need the dates we don't we need we don't need the time zone so i was originally pulling in everything we just need the dates okay hit that boom and you see how it all combined together because these two um components will be working together okay all right next what we need to do is we just need to confirm the availability so we're going to use uh open ai to do that okay so let's go back in here we are going to create a completion okay and we get the model we're going to use is um gpt 40 and again the role is going to be user and the message content let's just pull it yeah to save our time and then we'll go over it together so far so good You're cool cool all right so i said you're an assistant i need you to do the following one analyze the text below which was parsed from calendar entries the parsed calendar entry entries are dates and times that i am not available i need you to determine if i'm available for a minimum of one hour on a proposed meeting date and time uh, proposed meeting date and time let's get that in here oops okay that's fine all right so the proposed meeting date is let's just collapse everything let's go back to the original here actually right here proposed meeting date is that date and the time is that time the parsed text uh it's going to be here this is what we just did we just aggregated here and this is going to be the parse text so this is the text that is going to have all of our scheduled items on our calendar and we want open ai to just look through that and analyze it and see if i'm available or not okay so after so what i said next is after after confirming my availability i need you to output a short sms like response confirming my availability um, and I gave it two examples to so say, I I've checked Aaron's calendar and it looks like he's available at your closing on. And then we'll put the date and time again here. So let's go back in here. Date is dates here and the time. Oops. Sorry. Got a lot going on and the time is here. Please blah, blah, blah. And I said the rest. And then the next is here, the date. And I put a response when I'm unavailable, right? So the date is here again at this time. At that time. Awesome. And I said, only output the response. Okay. And then we can just put uh, 500 tokens. Hit OK. Let's rename this. We are going to rename this confirm. Confirm. Oops, I'm like a spell. Confirm availability. Yep, come on. There you go. Um, I spell it right. It's all right. All right. So we're just going to confirm availability. It's this right here. Boom. OK. And let's save it. We did a lot. So make sure we save everything. And let's run it. All right. So if I um, run the module again. And uh, let's go here. All right, and we're gonna choose where to start from. 
go back here, choose manually, All right? And let's choose the last one, hit okay, and let's run it. Okay, awesome. So now um, we are going to see here. I checked Aaron's calendar and unfortunately he's unavailable for your closing at 8, 12, 24 at, at 14 o'clock. He's scheduled for a meeting. He's scheduled for a meeting or another closing at that time. Would you like for us to assign another notary for you? Yeah, yeah, yada, yada. So it checked the calendar to show that I'm unavailable. But if we look here, this is what it parsed, right? So it parsed the two, the calendar entry. So it shows that all of these times I'm unavailable, right? Between these times I'm unavailable. Okay. Cool. And that's exactly what it was because we um, have two time slots here, but let's see. I'm going to send another text message saying if I'm available at 10 a.m. Well, yeah, 10 a.m. So say, let's go back here. Uh, they say, um, are you available for a closing in Newark? Or well, let's say nowhere. Let's say Clifton. Oops. Come on. On Monday, uh, eight. 12, 8, 12 at 10 a.m. All right, let's set that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and oops, sorry about that. Let's go back here and let's run it again. Okay, let's run it once. Let's finish up with the last message. Let's say Monday Clifton. 8, 12 at 10 a.m. All right, but let's see what the response is. We can even see it on the phone here. Hello, I'm Aaron, the assistant. No, that's not that one. That's, oh, I didn't, I didn't do that part yet, sorry. I've checked Aaron's calendar and it looks like he is available for your closing at 8, 12, 24 at 10 a.m. Please be sure to email the full order details and that's my email address right there. So you can see that it worked, that they checked the calendar and it showed that I am available at that time. And if you look at the actual calendar, I am available at 10, 10 a.m. On, on 8, 12, which is great. So you can see the power so far of what you can do with this. I mean, what we're going to do next is we got to actually add the calendar entry. We're going to actually add the calendar entry into the calendar. All right. Um, but first of all, before we want to do that, we want to notify it. We, we want to notify the seller because this message is actually what we want to send to the send to the, um, the sender. The, all right. So let's do that here. Let's go back here and we could actually just copy this module to save time. Copy. Let's paste it here and plug it in here and let's open this up and the body. What we want to do this time, we can close this and we want to just add the results from the last message. So if we run it again, um, I'm going to run this again. Oops. Choose where to start uh, manually. Make sure it works. Go here. Okay. Run once. I'll go through everything. Check my calendar. It's going to send a text message. And if you see on the phone, you're going to see two messages come in. See that first one that came in. Um, and then you should see the second one that came in. Right. Uh, I've checked Aaron's calendar and it looks like he's available on your closing at 8 12. Send the order detail. Awesome. Okay. Cool. All right. So next thing we're going to do is based on the message that we receive. So this can receive two types of responses, right? It goes say yes or no. Um, if it says no, we don't want to add it to the calendar, but if it says yes, you want to add it to the calendar, right? So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to want to, um, have open AI, just look at the results and then we can um, go from there. Right? So let's, um, put up another module, uh, open AI. And this time I think I want to use the new, GPT model, we will use GPT 4.0 mini. And because we just have a little mini task for it to do. <laughs> All right. So the content in this particular case is going to be short and sweet. I'll just copy it and paste it here. Okay. And the results is going to be from here. Um, wait a second. All right. Yep. Yep. 
All right. Yeah, the results is going to be from here. So let's go check the results. So basically what, it's, what, I'm, what I'm saying is um, the text below is the SMS message sent in regard to my availability. If I'm available, please output available. Okay. And the text below. So it's going to parse. It's going to just read the text. And if it sees that I'm available, then it's going to output available. Okay. And I'm going to need that variable in order to know whether or not I should send them it. I should add that entry to the account to my calendar. Okay. So we'll give it 500 tokens. That should be more than enough. Okay. And let's do this. Let's rename this to uh, available at to calendar. And let's give it an analogy of a question mark. Okay. And then what we want to do next is we want to add it to the calendar, right? So and we, and we'll add a filter as well. Cause we have to filter the, the results out. Okay. All right, so let's go to calendar. And what we want to do is we want to create an event, right? We want to create an event in the calendar. And then you want to say um, closing request, maybe. It's a good one, right? Closing requests. And then the start date and then end date. So let's do this. All right, so the start date is going to be, we're gonna format the date and the date again. If we, um, let's collapse everything here and let's go to the date, right? So the date is going to be here. So we could just go up here, close this and add the date. And let's go back in here and add the time. All right, so if we look at the format, we're just saying format the date and time. So we are formatting the date and time, right? Um, so the reason we're formatting the, the date and time is it's going to be uh, the date or the time. And if we look at the date and the time here, we see that it says um, 8, 12, 2024. And then we say, it, we also see that it says 10 o'clock AM. We don't need the AM and PM because we're gonna, do, we're gonna be doing military time. So in this particular case, we are gonna take the string zero to five. So we look at it, if we look at it closely, is um we can say zero is the zero one two three four five so ten uh ten o'clock <laughs> yeah it's five it's five characters okay if you include the colon okay so it's five character so we're saying zero to five we only need dope we only need we only need that we don't need to um we we take in a substring of the actual ten o'clock a.m we treat in 10 a.m as a long text and we just taken a substring of that text, which is the, this is 10 o'clock and taking out the AM portion of it. So that's why we parsed it that way. I didn't explain that earlier too. Okay. All right. So let's copy this as well. All right. And here on the date, again, it's going to be the date and the time. Um, I'll and the time is here and this time we're adding an hour so we added one hour so we want to do it from 10 a.m to 11 10 a.m to 11 a.m we want to make sure that that hour we block off in our calendar for this closing okay and the body content is the next thing that we need it's going to be plain text or you can do html if you want as well but the the body content we want to put the intent so remember earlier we were looking at the intent what the, what the caller, what, what the, like you're saying caller, what the text message was about. Um, we just want to put that summary in, in, in the body. So in the notes, we'll see what the, what it was about. We could do a lot more where the, we could look for a, an address. So if, so, so if, uh, someone say we need you for closing in Newark at this specific address, we could add the address automatically into the calendar or any other important information we can add to the calendar as well. But just for simplicity sake. Um, we are just going to just add the date. Okay. And, uh, we'll hit okay. Um, but what we also need to do is we need to set up a filter, right? Um, because as, as it is right now, it'll automatically just send it. Even if it's, um, even if it's a no, even if the person is not available, we'll add it to the calendar. What we're going to do here is we want to set up a filter and the filter. We're going to say, um, add, add to calendar. We say add to calendar. And the condition is going to be to add to calendar. You want to say it needs to contain 
uh, case insensitive, containing case insensitive that attacks availability. Pain. If it contains the word availability, um, no matter if it's, it's case insensitive, it'll it'll allow it to go through. Okay, and that's what we told in the last in the last. Um, that's what we uh, specified in the last um, opening I to do to output available if if um, I'm available at that time slot. Okay, all right. So let's uh, clean this up. Let's hit save. And let's also, sorry, I forgot to rename this and then we can uh, run it. Okay. Let's just rename this um, at calendar. And add an emoji real quick. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. All right. Okay. Save it one more time. And we got to run it. Let's choose where to run it from. Choose where to start, and we just go to select the last text that we sent. Okay, hit okay. It run once, it should run everything, and it should add it to the calendar because I am available at 10 o'clock. Oops, what would happen? Output is available. Results. Oh, I put a I put availability. So let's see, uh, let's, let's change that. I put availability, I mean, available. Oops, see, messed it up. It, it worked, but I just messed up. All right. All right, let's try it again. Let's save and let's run it again. Uh, choose the start, go back and go here, hit okay. Let's hit run it again, it should run this time. I didn't hit save, but it should still run. There we go. Added it to the calendar. So now if we go back to the calendar, this looked like it was successful. If we go back to our calendar, we should see closing request. It's in our calendar. There you go. 10 o'clock. All right. So we did it. All right. So one other test we can do is we can actually just run one where I was not available. So we go choose where to start, choose manually, and the text message where it was asking if I was available at 2 p.m. This one should not work. It should not add it. It should not add it, to, add it to the calendar because I'm not available at 2 p.m. And if we go back to the calendar, we can double check that. So at 2 p.m., I have a 2.30 on, on the 12th, so it shouldn't work. So let's go back to the here. Oops. Whoa. Did I run it? Uh, I don't think I ran it. Let's make sure. Huh. 8, 12, 2 p.m. It still ran it. Why? Why did you run? It was not supposed to run. Contains available. And it says the results not available. So why did it run? Oh, I got it. Uh, uh, I said contains. It has to say equal to available it has to be equal to available okay not contain available because it says not available so it did contain available right so it did add it to the calendar so double book me here so let's uh delete this all right we caught that awesome i'm glad we caught that all right so let's go back and let's try it again let's hit save it has to be equal to available not contains available okay all right let's try it again we go back choose where to start choose manually and let's go back to two o'clock. Hit OK. Hit run. Now this time, fingers crossed, it shouldn't it shouldn't add it to the calendar. Right. Good. Because then this didn't this it didn't pass through because I am unavailable. Unavailable, right? At that time. Perfect. All right. So it ran it ran successfully after some trial and error. So I hope that this automation provided a ton of value for you if you made it to the end of this video and you watched this entire automation congratulations to you i sure that you are going to be an automated automation rock star so um be sure to like and subscribe the video um this is actually part of a, a complete um every complete scenario so i did one on on phones i did one if you if receive a phone call i made that automated 
if you receive an email, how to automate that. And this last piece is this text messages. If you receive a text message, how to automate that. So that's pretty much all the ways that a, that a, that a prospect or a client will contact you uh, to find out your availability for a closing. And you should have no excuse now than to be able to respond automatically in, auto, in an automation automated fashion. I'll include, I'll include a link to all of those videos as well in the show notes. I've taken enough of your time. I appreciate you watching. Until next time, peace.